this topic's called it's not a debate uh, very often when people have differences of opinion, and I'm not talking about politics or values or things, I'm talking about like in uh, agile work, uh, process, coding, whatever uh, in our workplace, uh, you hear a lot of people discussing that, well, I believe this or I believe that, and people kind of bring up their own opinions. And, I, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing that. that. That actually adds some clarifications and you could see both sides of the story that way. But if you're a coach and you're trying to um, get somebody to understand something, sometimes it's a very difficult process to kind of debate with people. Um, in me, for, for me, knowledge work is really about a discovery of what's useful uh, in terms of how you do the work and also what's useful in terms of the product you're building. It's a discovery process. It should be more like a Socratic method where you're trying to go deeper and understand things. You're not trying to convince one or the other. Just think about it. A debate means I've got this position and I'm arguing for it. Well, I don't like that. I think it's better to be saying, hey, we disagree on this. Great. Let's learn something. Let's discuss it. Let's see what's going on. Let's go someplace with this. And it doesn't have to be a debate. It should be an inquiry in terms of where's the truth. Now, the way I got to this point was basically, that was a long time ago. I don't know, 25 years ago, maybe, or something. I was watching a an instructor uh, well he wasn't really an instructor he was he was a professor actually at a university who came into the client i was consulting and he was teaching people or supposedly telling people about object orientation and i just asked him could i kind of sit in and observe and he was gracious and said sure and that's all i did i just observed because i wanted to see how he did things and the way he worked was really interesting <laughs> and not any way i'd ever worked before this time uh, this was a long time back. I kind of do this a lot more now, but I certainly did not do this then. What he did was he actually almost never told them anything. <laughs> he would just ask them questions. He would ask them what they believed and then what would lead to that. And then he would sometimes pose problems and and see how uh, they responded. And it wasn't, it didn't even feel like he was guiding them anywhere. It just felt like he was asking them questions based on what they'd answered. And it was an inquiry. It was like, okay, well, if you believe that, then then what happens? And uh, I could not see any pattern to the questioning as if he was guiding them. And in fact, I asked him about that. And he said, no, he wasn't guiding them. He was just talking to them. Well, after, I don't know, it was maybe an hour of this, the concept he was trying to teach them, which was, for those of you who code, is basically was polymorphism and you know abstraction and, and programming and a difficult concept to get people to understand Um when they haven't been trained at it. Remember, this was in the late 90s. Not many people had been, and these were Fortran programmers. And I remember, though, that at some point, all of a sudden, somebody themselves figured out what the issue was. And she made a question like, oh, well, that would mean like the object has to be responsible for itself. And he said, okay, uh, not like you're right, but uh, just like, I don't even know if he responded. And all of a sudden, she understood what that meant. She totally got why this was useful. And at that moment, you could also, it was really cool. There was this room about 10 or 12 of us in a circle and you could just see the jaws dropping as everybody got it. It was really remarkable. I'd never seen anything like this. And I was like, wow, that was really something. Now I knew, and then I wondered, well, how did this guy do this? And I realized a couple of things. He actually believed that object orientation was a good thing. <laughs> he had faith in it being a good thing. But he wasn't actually committed to it being a good thing. In other words, he was willing to be questioned about his own beliefs. So he would just ask questions to discover what made sense and what didn't make sense. Now, if he was correct, they would eventually discover through his questions what was useful. Now, what if he wasn't correct? Well, then he would learn something. So this not debating actually can be a little scary because you've got to put yourself in the situation of, well, maybe you're not right. Maybe they know something you don't know. But are you up to debating and proving you're right or are you up to learning? So this is a skill you have to do. It takes a little bit of practice um, and it takes a bit of a letting go of your ego as well. You've got to be willing to talk to people as if you're not right and do a true inquiry. Now, if there's something you're sure you're right, and there are some things, things you've been doing for years and years and you've talked to people and whatever, then you have to kind of act as if you don't know. And I don't mean in a um, non-genuine way. You have to really di basically dispel your solid belief in it and be in an inquiry and talk to people. 
And now that might enable you to guide with some better questions than otherwise, but you should always be in an inquiry. As a coach, coming from a place of authority is not a good thing. People will get defensive. They won't want to listen as much. They have to then admit you're smarter than them. That doesn't mean you're smarter than them, at least in this one issue, but people tend to overgeneralize. So one of the great coaching skills is to really be a peer with them in the discussion and be willing that you're going to learn something. And that's helpful because you want to learn something. So it's not a debate. We're not arguing for position. We're not arguing for who's right. We're actually should be in an inquiry for what is useful. Thanks. Hope this topic was useful to you.